Paul is uh, uh, a fastidious and energetic editor of the UMAP <laughs> Journal, which is uh, a flagship publication of the COMAP organization. Uh, you should know that tomorrow we have a session devoted to all things COMAP, uh, including their modeling activities, et cetera, right. and including the journal. Um, Paul is an emeritus professor from Beloit, Wisconsin, but not living in Wisconsin now, am I right? Oh, yes, I am. Oh, you are. Okay, I make your point. We haven't moved. So okay, still Beloit. That's yeah, okay. Um, and You're the one uh, that moved. <laughs> yeah, I'm the one that moved. <laughs> I've had the pleasure of knowing Paul uh, through for many years through Small Liberal Arts Colleges Association in uh, Wisconsin and Michigan, and, and uh, since then here we go. Look at oh, this. There. Oh, so, we're seeing it. This is hooray, so hooray. You Kevin, see the whole thing? Kevin will respond to your move slides. Is that right, Kevin? Yes, that is correct. Okay. okay, so Paul, you're on. Let's make it. All right. Well, let's let's move to the the next slide. I've already been introduced. <laughs> uh, just to tell you that uh, Comap's been around for a while, more than forty years. Uh, it's a nonprofit organization and uh, has been devoted to uh, mathematics education of all kinds, particularly applications, and uh, in introducing them at all levels. We even have a used to have a publication called the Elementary Mathematician. And we still do have a high school newsletter, um, as well as the UMAP Journal, which is designed for the, the college level. The journal itself uh, is specifically devoted to modeling and applications. It's a quarterly, uh, it's in print and also electronic. In print, usually in black and white, but occasionally uh, I can persuade the production staff and so forth to afford to bring an issue out in color. So there are two issues that are devoted to the contest, which you'll hear about tomorrow from um, uh, so, some of the people in charge of them. And then two issues have general content. And uh, that's the point where I wanna move to the next slide to talk about the kind of content. Okay, here, this is first, this is the, the current issue. I thought I'd just show you what the cover looks like. On the right, you probably can't read the titles on the left, but that's uh, that's fine. The cover is, is designed by an artist. Here's the cover of the next issue, which is going to feature an actual theorem. Uh, we rarely have original mathematical theorems proved in the journal, but once in a while, that does happen. Um, and there is one, in fact, about uh, track layouts. OK, if we could go on to the next one. This is, this is the, the, the topic that I wanted to talk about. Uh, there's, there's the usual kinds of things. Now, let's see, if I click the article, will anything happen? But no. Kevin can. In the original, it, uh, it goes to an actual uh, uh, article in the journal. Um, and this is the particular one I picked, I think, is one by a high school student uh, about uh, a, a particular game and analyzing and using Markov chains. In addition, of course, we have reviews of books, videos, and, and so forth. Um, and then in addition to editorials that I occasionally write, we have guest editorials. And then there are some variations on the usual. There are UMAP modules, and those are uh, teaching learning modules. They state the target audience, the mathematical prerequisites, time for completion, and they have exercises together with solutions, and sometimes a sample exam. There are over 300 such uh, modules already available, and uh, recent topics include uh, the mathematics of drumming and the mathematics of image compression. And ILAP, ILAP stands for Interdisciplinary Lively Applications Module. That's a group project, and it's authored by a, a mathematician and a a faculty member from another department, together usually with students uh, who form the group and um, analyze a particular uh, situation together. And uh, recent topics here include uh, analyzing bridge structure, uh, particularly notable in light of uh, a recent bridge crash, and also coming up in the next issue, uh, ameliorating uh, contamination of water, groundwater, uh, through the efforts of the EPA. And that, that these things have actual real data and uh, they're, uh, that particular one is done with a, in connection with the geologist. 
The last one on this page, mini modules, those are like UMAP modules. Uh, they're they're in, in a sense that uh, they're articles with a, with some exercises, but they're not nearly so long. A UMAP module might be, oh, a dozen pages to 40, and a mini module, maybe six to 12. So these are, are short things. And in the second issue of 2022, we'll have one that uh, talks about PCBs in the human body. Uh, that's a particular kind of toxic chemical. Okay, we can go on to the next one. Uh, these are the things that uh, UMAP Journal offers that may not be quite the same anyplace else. Uh, the unique opportunities. Uh, a model reality check is a, you might call it the completion of the modeling uh, circuit that compares the model to the subsequent results in the real world. Did the model predict what was going to happen? And uh, recent examples have been the projections of the population of China. Turns out that the uh, one child family was never really enforced, uh, at least not to, the, not to the extent that it limited the population to the 700 million that was originally intended. It certainly had other, other effects on people. Uh, others, uh, transdermal drug delivery systems. And then coming up in the next issue, one about sustainable fishing fishing off the uh, east coast of North America, the models for haddock fishing, uh, how well did they do? Um, we look at models from 20 years ago and we compare them with the results today. Uh, the on jargon column is an occasional column that explains mathematical terminology or notation. One a recent one uh, talked about change point models. Uh, you know, for example, has there been an abrupt change in global temperature, or has it just been sort of a gradual, uh, super exponential uh, increase? Then MassServe is a collaboration that uh, uses mathematics specifically to address social, health, or environmental challenges in a community. And one of the subspecies of, of this is data detectives, which uh, specifically uses uh, statistical research and uh, starts from a question uh, from a community leader in an organization that can have some kind of influence on the community and perhaps change society in some way. So it starts from a real question, not from some uh, academic uh, idea. So recent topics have included uh, uh, homicides in Chicago and distance learning in schools. All right, if we could go on to the next one. I know most of you are concerned about differential equations in particular. We, we certainly publish other kinds of models as well, but I thought I'd mention some of the recent and upcoming items that use differential equations. I already mentioned the, the first couple, actually I mentioned all, all of the, all four of them here, uh, but I, we didn't get to see the links to them, but that's probably okay. And then uh, not about the differential equations is the theorem I mentioned about track layouts. Okay. Next one, please. Well, some things about the journal and uh, its uh, standing and status. It's a long established uh, recognized scholarly publication. It's published in cooperation with various uh, professional organizations, which also were involved in sponsoring the, uh, the contests that uh, take up a couple of the issues each year. Uh, articles uh, and all the material that isn't specifically invited is uh, subject to double blind refereeing. And uh, I hope that uh, I'm responsive and helpful in, uh, to authors in uh, making suggestions for improvement that they find uh, uh, acceptable and, and welcome. Uh, there is a detailed guide for authors. And uh, that detailed guide for authors is at the uh, location that I mentioned earlier about the uh, uh, well, if we go to the next slide, it's right at the top there. HTTP colmap.com.umap. That has links to sample articles for each of the publication models that I mentioned earlier. It has also a specific guide for authors about, uh, oh, the various kinds of housekeeping things and uh, bibliography, desirable bibliography uh, formats and so forth, as well as copyright information. And, uh, we hope that what we offer is a uh, fairly generous copyright agreement where authors retain most rights. 
And uh, also there's a guide on use of material from other sources. We do have to worry about uh, the, the possibility of authors uh, putting in or wanting to put in uh, graphics or data or, or photos that they don't have the rights to. And so this gives you a guide uh, about what kinds of things are okay and which are not. Uh, also at the site, there are uh, supplements. Uh, some of the articles have additional data, additional uh, text and so forth that we could not print in the journal itself. I, I should say about the copyright information, if for some reason you want to publish your uh, article um, either uh, without copyright or subject to one of the various public copyright agreements, that's certainly possible too. The only thing that Comap has to have is uh, copyright to the issue uh, and the formatting itself. You're certainly welcome in all cases to post your article in the final form at your own website and share it with your um, colleagues. Okay, the next one, this is the invitation part. Uh, I invite you to become an author. Uh, in, in any of those particular modes that I mentioned earlier. I also invite you to become a reader. We uh, arrange that through a COMAP membership, much like membership in, in other societies. Also invite you to be a referee if you'd like. And if you simply write to me uh, and let me know your specialty area or areas and uh, kinds of manuscripts you'd like to, to look at, uh, be happy to uh, send you anything that comes our way that would be of interest to you. Also, if you want to be a judge for the contest, and we had last year more than 300 uh, triage judges for the ICM, that's the Interdisciplinary Contest in Mathematics, and Amanda Beecher will be talking to you tomorrow about that, and she'll also talk about the Mathematical Contest in Modeling, the MCM, and I should mention both of those contests uh, start this Thursday. And I think, I think you can still register teams up through Tuesday. I'd have to check, uh, check that, or you could check it at the site for, um, for a call map. Okay, last slide. Last slide. Ask if you have any questions. Uh, you, if, uh, I'll, I'll take them orally now, but you can also write me at simply Campbell at Beloit.edu, and then reminding you again of the. Uh, website uh, for the UMAP journal with uh, all those samples and um, instructions and so forth. Okay, that's the end of the presentation. We can uh, stop the, the screen sharing, Kevin. Okay. Any questions from anybody? Yes, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know how to raise the hand in Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was just wondering what the difference is between a referee and a reader uh, from that you mentioned on the previous slide. Oh, readers, readers are people who get the journal or, or read it in their, uh, their, uh, their library or read a colleague's copy. Uh, uh, referees are sometimes called reviewers, but I, I, don't, I, I wouldn't refer to them as simply readers. Other things. This, this is a, a wonderful example of outlets for creative things you do in your teaching. You know, we had several organizations yesterday talking and again tomorrow, Comap will be talking, but a lot of us do wonderful things in our class and no one ever knows it except the students. And if someone heard what you did, they would say, golly, I could do that. And the UMAP journal is, is this exceptional case to write. All right, let me just mention that uh... One of the articles, actually it's a uh, uh, model reality check, the one about uh, sustainable fishing and then the um, mini module about PCBs. Both of those grew out of uh, problem sets that uh, people assigned in their differential equations course. Uh, and I uh, noticed them and encouraged the authors to formulate them in one of those uh, fashions. And, and so th the thing is that the stuff you do for your class uh, you're right. The people don't find out about it unless you find a way to tell them, and the UMAP journal right. is such a way. Yeah, I was at West Point walking down the hall one day in Rod Sturdivant's class, and there were students with different colored yarn standing in the hallway and moving. And I went, what on earth is he doing? And he's teaching Euler's method with various step sizes. 
where each tile, you go one tile is your step size, you go half a tile, you go one. And he was trying to get them to find out, it was a military application, how you could shoot it through the door. What step size would it take for a numerical solution? He had all the chairs aside and everything. I said, right, you have to tell people about this. And sure enough, I got him to write an article. But um, any other questions? I want to talk about Simeode, but this is great to have this. When does the next issue come out? Cecil wants to know. Oh, it's just, it's right now with the uh, copy reader, we have a professional copy uh, editor who goes through and finds all the mistakes that I don't find and that authors, authors are the worst proofreaders, uh, the authors don't find. And uh, as soon as I hear back from him, it will go to press. And so the, the issue will be out in print and electronically before the end of March. Okay. Well, and you can always go to the COMAP website and learn everything you need to know and learn lots more um, that you should know, I think, about what they do. I want to thank uh, Paul very much. And uh, that's how I say thank oh, you. Thank you to the audience. Okay. And, and yes, thank you. And